Hello, hello, hello. It is F1 Spud here and welcome to episode 12 of Spud Ball. We are now halfway through the Premier League season for the 2023-24 season with Liverpool currently top of the table and Sheffield United bottom of the table. In today's video we are going to be talking about who I think are the young player of the season so far, the manager of the season so far and the player of the season so far. And I've tried to make this as neutral as possible. Um, I've gone for a bit of a surprise pick for young player of the season that a lot of people won't recognise because he doesn't play for a big club on a top half side. Um, but yeah, so this is we're just I'm just going to go through why I think this player or manager should be young player of the season, for example, so far. For the young player of the season as well, I've only gone for players that were 21 or younger when the season started. Um, I know that it can be like 23 or under for the actual Premier League award. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Before we do get into it though, I just want to say a massive thanks for the support we've had recently. Um, obviously, I know it was a couple of months ago we hit 3,000 followers on Twitch. We don't really get many followers on Twitch anymore. Um, but thank you to the people that have been following on Twitch. Do appreciate it. We will be live tonight as well. The last, potentially the last stream of 2023. There might be another one. There will be the sub giveaway as well tonight. If you are a subscriber on the Twitch channel, um, we are doing our monthly giveaway tonight. Just so aware of that. And also a massive thank you on the YouTube as well. We did hit a thousand views on the Clementine reunites with Lily after eight years Walking Dead video. Massive thank you for the support there. In less than three weeks as well, we hit that. So obviously if you do watch the videos, please drop a subscription. I would really appreciate it. And drop a follow on the Twitch as well. It is free for both of them. And it is really appreciated. So, moving on. My young player of the season so far is Jared Branthwaite from Everton. Now I know that that's going to be a bit of a surprising one for a lot of people. But... I'm very surprised with how good Jared Branthwaite has been for Everton since they um since they signed not sorry since he was recalled from his since sorry since his loan expired at PSV Eindhoven which had a very good season in the Netherlands. He's also been on loan spells to Blackburn Rovers uh, since joining Everton from Carlisle United. But the young centre-half has had a really, really good season in an Everton side that has only conceded 25 goals in 19 games. They are a lot more defensively solid than previous seasons. Branthwaite himself has played 16 of those 19 games. Um, with 17 tackles, 85 duels, 43 aerial duels and 109 recoveries, which is very high. The young centre-half plays alongside James Tarkowski, who is a more senior player, but is also a very good centre-half. And with Jordan Pickford in goal, they are not conceding as much as previous seasons. And obviously they did hit, were hit with that 10-point deduction, which is why they are not in the top half. Otherwise they would be, if I'm right in saying, I think they would be 10th if they hadn't had that points deduction. But Jared Branthwaite, compared to Connor Cordy and Michael Keane, has been a huge addition to Sean Dyche's side this season. And definitely a centre-back that a lot of people should be keeping their eye on. Especially Gareth Southgate. Because I personally think that he's been better than Levi Colwell this season. Um, and I think Jared Branthwaite should be sneaking towards the England senior side. Rather than just the under-21s. One of his more memorable performances in my opinion. I think was against West Ham United. In the Premier League. Where they won 1-0 at the London Stadium. And... He had a really, really good game um, where he made seven recoveries, ten clearances and won 75% of his aerial duels. So, that's why I've gone for Branford. There's other options. I know a lot of people will probably go for Cole Palmer. Um, but the reason I didn't go for Cole Palmer was just because... The amount of goals and assists he had, were, which weren't penalties. You know, he, a lot of his goals have been penalties. He has been a good signing for Chelsea. I won't deny that. But I just wanted to go for someone a bit different in this instance. So, yeah, that's why I've gone for Brantford. 
Um, moving on to the manager of the season. I think a lot of people will have the same manager. I've gone for Unai Emery. I really wanted to go for Jurgen Klopp because Liverpool are top with a brand new midfield. I can't believe Liverpool are top with a brand new midfield. A full rebuild, obviously. Uh, Ryan Gravenberch, Alexis McAllister, Dominic Sobers, Lai and Wataru Endor. Um, which they've all had good games, they've all had bad games. Um, but it is their first season in Liverpool colours. And apart from McAllister, it's their first seasons in the Premier League. So they're going to have to get used to English football. Obviously, Wataru Endor has been pretty good, especially in recent weeks. But he's going to the Asia Cup um, after the game against Newcastle. Obviously, Postacoglu has had a really good season so far under Spurs. Um, some brilliant attacking football, which they didn't see under Mourinho and Conte. Even losing Harry Kane hasn't really affected them much. Um, you know, Son has been a huge player again for them after a poor season last time out. Richarlison's starting to find his feet. Dejan Kulisevsky's really good. Madison was doing really well before his injury, same as Van der Ven. Vicario's been one of the signs of the season. I hadn't really known much about him before the move. Arteta's also had a good season. There's no denying that. And even someone like David Moyes. But I have gone for Emery because nobody had Aston Villa being third. And to be honest, they should not They should have beaten Sheffield United. And they let a huge lead slip against Man United. But Aston Villa, their home record is absolutely remarkable. Um, and they beat Man City and Arsenal in back-to-back -back games 1-0. Defensively, they're really solid. They like to play it through the back. Obviously, Emi Martinez, who is one of the better keepers in the world, obviously won the Yashin Trophy. He's probably been maybe the third best goalkeeper this season, let's say, behind Alisson and Vicario. But, um, you know, Conza, you know, Pau Torres has been a good sign, and Diaby's had good moments, even though he's not starting as much anymore. Douglas Louise has been one of the best midfielders in the league this season. Bubakar Kamara. Their team is really good. Crazy to think that they were near relegation when Gerard was there. Um, just shows the difference in class between the managers. The different. Uh, the, Emery is obviously a European giant, let's say. Especially in the Europa League. Now he's in the Europa Conference League with Aston Villa. And I do expect Aston Villa to win that competition this year. Um... But obviously they've had some... Ollie Watkins has been a huge part of their success this season. Um, as he normally gets the majority of the goals. He's had nine goals, six assists this season. But John McGinn, Leon Bailey and Douglas Luiz all having five goals each. Bailey having five goals, five assists as well. They are really, really good offensively. And they're good defensively. The only concern for Aston Villa is their away record. You know, losing to Nottingham Forest throwing a two-goal lead at Man United, losing 3-0 to a Liverpool, 5-1 to Newcastle. That's where they need to, and only getting a late goal against Brentford and Bournemouth, etc. I th I think if Aston Villa can get top five this season with the Europe European coefficient, depending on how the rest of the English clubs do, they need to try and push back into the top two to get that fifth Champions League spot. If it's five Champions League spots that get given out, though, to the English League. I, I would not be surprised if it's Liverpool, Arsenal, Aston Villa, Man City and Spurs. To be honest. I know West Ham are around there as well. Even, you know, Man United are. And Brighton, Newcastle. But I, I think it'll just be the top five it is now. But in a different order. Anyway, enough about Emery. It's time for my player of the season. There's some people... That, there's going to be a lot of different options here. There'll be Salah, Haaland, Rice, Van Dijk, Alexander-Arnold perhaps. Uh, I, I've gone for Van Dijk. Um, Liverpool's captain. After a pretty mediocre season last time around, people were saying he was finished. You know, he's not the same as he was a few years ago. You know, Van Dijk is always in the um, is always in the comparisons with Vidic, Ferdinand, Terry, etc. Company. Obviously, they play, well, bar company, they all played a different type of football. Because nowadays, it's about passing it around the back as well, which is a diff another skill that you would have needed. But Van Dijk, has, for me, has been the best player in the Premier League this season. Bar the red card against Newcastle, 
he has been an absolute rock for Liverpool. He has won the most aerial duels in the league and also has the most aerial duel success rate. Um, he also has uh, two assists and a goal next to him. His leadership skills are quality. He got man of the match last game against Burnley. I think he got man of the match against Sheffield United as well. Um, he's just had a really, really good season, um, Van Dijk. He is a huge, important, hugely important player to Liverpool as well. Even though he's 32, his contract runs out in 2025. I would be shocked if he doesn't extend his contract because he is playing really well. Now, obviously, he had a couple of good years before he joined Liverpool. Otherwise, Liverpool wouldn't have spent £75 million. Obviously, his best season in football was 2018-19, where he was seven points off the Ballon d'Or, but also won UEFA Men's Player of the Year and the Champions League. Um, wasn't dribbled past in the Hall of the Premier League. Hasn't been dribbled past yet this season either. And the fact of the matter is Liverpool have to do more defensive work. He was obviously unlucky to get that injury in 2021. I think in 21-22 he was immaculate, but people didn't really talk about him as much as they should have. Obviously he's won Premier League Player of the Season as well in 18-19, I believe. Um... He's, a lot of the time you see him in like the World Eleven as well. He won't be in it this year because it's based off last season. But he's making a making a claim to be there again. I think if you take out any player with the Liverpool team, the most important two are pro most important three are Alisson, Van Dijk and Salah. And you've seen when Salah was suspended. Sorry, not Salah. When Van Dijk was suspended, it was a bit more shaky. Obviously, it was Gomez and Matip or Canate, Gomez, etc. Quanza, who's had a good season since coming into the team. But I, I do genuinely think Van Dijk's been the best player in the league this season. And I know I'm a huge fan of Van Dijk, so it might come across as being biased. But I just think the consistency in his performances is why he's been the best. He's, you know, his passing's brilliant. Obviously, in the modern game, you have to have ball playing centre backs, which is Van Dijk is a ball playing centre back. Um, you know, I remember even just like the first game of the season against Chelsea, they were Chelsea were probably the better team for most of the game, but Van Dijk, Van Dijk was a huge factor into that game being a draw. But yeah, that is my that is my um, that is going to be it for this video. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments below who you would go for as your young player of the season so far, player of the season so far, manager of the season so far. Um, I am interested to know. I, I, do, I do think, though, one of the main reasons Liverpool are top of the table is because of Van Dijk, though. Um, you know, even with all the injury rec injuries that Liverpool have had, you know, both the left-backs, shoulder and collarbone injuries. Um... Obviously, like, I mean, people forget about Thiago and Bajetic. Obviously, Bajetic, he's only, like, 19, so he's got ages. But, but yeah, I think, um, I, I think the, I think the opinions and the facts that I've put in are fair for all three of the players. But, yeah, let me know who you guys would go for down below. And thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. And if you're watching as soon as I've uploaded this, I'll see you on Twitch tonight, hopefully. Thank you.